What's up guys? It is time to wrap up my favorite Marvel Legends figures of 2019. I have had this list kind of ready to go for a little while, but I've been holding out on the off chance that getting Doctor Doom in at the last minute would make him a contender for the list. And I mean, he was a contender, I suppose, because I was waiting him out, but he's not going to appear on this list. Uh, I just, at the end of the day, could not do it. And I think we've got a pretty solid list. I think that it might be a little controversial because a lot of the subject matter is really related. So if you're not a mutant fan, you might not want to watch this one. And there's also a couple figures on this list that I actually never got around to reviewing just for one reason or another. Got lost in the shuffle, ran out of time, or just plain forgot to do the review. I've had them, all of them since they came out. There's just a couple that kind of fall into that. Uh, they fell through the cracks type of category, but no, rest assured that everything on this list is something that I'm a big fan of, uh, just for my own reasons, really. These are not top 10 technical figures, the best because they're constructed well, these are the best because they're my favorites. So we're going to start things off with number 10, and of course, an X-Men character, an X-Men villain, and one of my favorite X-Men villains, Mr. Sinister, is number 10, and there's just so much for me to love with when it comes to this guy. The height, the size, the weight. I even love the goofy cape on this figure. He looks fantastic as far as sculpt and paint applications. The face on this guy looks really well done, and dare I say, gives him that I'm going to say it, the sinister look that we're supposed to have with this guy. He just embodies what I think of when I think of Mr. Sinister. Number nine is a figure that I wasn't sure was actually going to appear on this list, and then I realized that at the end of the day, he has to be on this list just because he fulfills a huge spot in a collection for me, and he's also a really well-executed figure. So number nine is the Marvel Riders Professor X figure. So this guy, I almost forgot that he even came out this year because so much stuff is hit, and he came out so long ago, but this is everything I need in a Professor X. Effect pieces for the figure, effect piece for the chair, the chair itself, and then of course a really well done Professor X that despite the fact that he's always going to be sitting in that chair, looks really good and looks like he jumped right out of the comics. Number eight is a figure that, I mean, everybody needed. Everybody that does X-Men needed this guy this year, and there is zero chances that you weren't trying to get him because he was really hard to get a hold of for a while. Number eight is Beast, and he was going to be a little higher on the list, but, it, but ultimately the face on this guy isn't always what I want to see. There's always that more cartoon look you want to see when it comes to this guy, but this figure is exceptionally well done. He's really well articulated, kind of ushering in parts of that new articulation scheme they're kind of peppering in. Size is really good, he moves really well, and there's just a lot to love about this particular figure, and it's Beast and everybody needs him, and I was incredibly happy to finally get my hands on this guy. Number seven is the first figure that I never got around to reviewing, and by the time I realized that I missed this one, I just couldn't do it because it had been so long, but I was really kicking myself for not actually finishing doing this one. So number seven is Nightcrawler. Without a doubt, one of those top tier characters and figures of the year that everybody wanted to get a hold of. He is crammed full of accessories, he moves really well, he absolutely looks the part, and he's in that classic style costume that just absolutely does it for me. There's really nothing to not love about this figure. Number six might be the one real curveball when it comes to this particular list just because it isn't what I think a lot of people are going to see on their list or expect to see on a list, but this figure is really specific in terms of my nostalgia for it. It was also on a classic Toy Biz style card back and it's just a really well done figure. Number six is the Retro X-Men Dazzler, which again might be a bit of a surprise, but there is a lot to love about this one. I'm a huge fan of the Outback look, so they automatically got me right then and there. She comes with nice effect parts, and she just looks like the character. She looks exactly like I expect her to look. There's really nothing wrong with this one. She's not maybe as flashy as some of the other figures on this list, but I've got a huge fondness for the character, and this is just a really well-executed figure. Number five is the other figure that I never got around to reviewing, and this is one that I really was kind of dismayed that I never reviewed it because it's such an important character for me just from 
fandom nostalgia standpoint. So number five is the Colossus figure from the Colossus and Juggernaut 2 pack, specifically Colossus. This is my favorite version of my favorite X-Men, so there was no way I wasn't going to get this set. I went out of my way to get it early just because I was so excited to get that figure in my hands, and he really lived up to my expectations. I had been using the Marvel Select for a really long time, and while that is still an amazing figure, I like to have stuff that's contained in line, so it's really nice to get a fantastic beefy, larger scaled Marvel Legends Colossus. I think they absolutely nailed it. Number four is a figure that I had higher on my list originally, but at the end of the day, she was kind of missing a little bit for me, so I had to knock her down. Number four is Jean Grey. So it goes without saying that this is a figure that everybody that does X-Men has been clamoring for four years. We finally got her. They shoved her in a three pack with figures that we didn't necessarily need, but we all went out and bought it anyway, and she's a fantastic figure, and she comes with two great head sculpts. Where she really gets knocked down a bit for me is because she doesn't have any effect pieces. She doesn't really come with anything, and that was kind of a bummer for me. But I cannot discount the fact that I have needed this figure, I've been wanting this figure, and they executed on her really well. Number three is a figure that was comparatively a little bit lower on the list, and I had to just bump this one up purely out of nostalgia. It It's too good for me in that regard. So number three is the retro X-Factor Cyclops figure. This is my favorite suit for Cyclops for a number of reasons, but one one of the biggest reasons is that vintage Toy Biz figure that this guy is trying to emulate. And that's the nostalgia for me. And I love everything they're doing with the X-Men retro line. I think it's the best thing that they've done in a really long time. And this figure works just in a general sense. It very much looks like a solid Cyclops, but then they added all those new effect parts that really elevate this figure into something that the others never were. And I was already happy with just about all of them. So this is an added bonus for an already longtime favorite character for me. Number two is a figure that as soon as I got it in hand, I kind of knew it was going to be on this list just because it's a specific character that I love and I think they really just nailed this one. So number two is Gambit. Without a doubt, one of my top tier favorite style X-Men characters, right up there with Colossus and Wolverine for me personally. And they really executed on this figure really well. I think the body's nicely done. We still have that same old trench coat system, but it works well enough for this guy. He's got a fantastic head sculpt and he comes with a bow staff and multiple energy effects for his kinetic power. So there's really nothing for me to complain about on this guy. I think he looks great, he moves really well, and it's a favorite X-Men. It's kind of a winning combination for me. Now, when it comes to Marvel Legends, in the past I've always done a favorite Build-A-Figure for the year. This year I am not doing it because frankly there has not been a single Build-A-Figure this year that I would consider to be anything exceptional. I've, I did the Wendigo Build-A-Figure, never reviewed him. Did the Caliban Build-A-Figure, he's okay. I did the Molten Man Build-A-Figure, never reviewed it. I even made a big thing about I want to build this thing just to see what it's like and then I never reviewed it because it's nothing. The Kree Sentry is a Kree Sentry. Even Kingpin didn't really wow me. He's okay, he might be the favorite I suppose. But for me personally, really none of them have been all that great. I recently just built the Super Scroll. If you want to consider that one, uh, that one might be up there as well. So if we're going to talk about Build-A-Figures, I suppose we can talk about a Build-A-Figure size figure, which just happens to be my number one. So we're going to move right into number one. And this figure is, without a doubt, my favorite Marvel Legends by a wide margin, just because it is so much fun to move and play around with this figure. It looks perfect and it's just it's just everything I wanted it to be and it happens to come in a few different varieties we're not gonna talk about the San Diego version though because I think that one's a bit of a dud so my number one pick is the 80 years Green Hulk and Grey Hulk figures they are gonna share this spot because they are 95% the same figure, except for the fact that we get the greatest accessory in Marvel Legends history, the beautiful crushed pipe. There is nothing to not love about these figures. They have tremendous size, weight, they scale really well, they both look incredibly accurate to the comics with their unique style head sculpts. Even the shirt piece works well on these guys. I just love everything about them. I think this is one of the finest examples of Marvel Legends that Hasbro has ever made and frankly I would love for them to give me a few more at least give me a red hulk on this body I I want another one because I think that they absolutely knocked it out of the park and they deserve to be able to reuse this body for at least a little while so that is my list for the year uh, this one was honestly a little difficult to put together because I didn't want it to be all x-men and despite the fact that it's not 
I could not deny the fact that that's just what I love the most. This is my favorite top 10 Marvel Legends, not necessarily the technically best, but the ones that have the biggest impact on me, I suppose. And these were figures that I have wanted for a really long time, and Hasbro did an exceptional job on pretty much everything this year, but in these figures in particular, they were just a step above for me. So that's it, guys. That is my list, my favorite 10 figures of the year. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what yours are. And I'll catch you next time for the overall top 10 list.